Knocking on his closed door, the pterosaur professor didn't even bat an eye at the poorly hidden girl. He simply stepped aside and let us through. Ben was looking our way, but I chose to pay him no mind. After everything I heard, Olivia didn't even register he was here. She simply rolled herself to the back of the classroom and threw a door into what I'd always guessed was Iatakan's supply closet. You know what? I'm an idiot. It's a dark room, isn't it? The stares of my other classmates abated, thankfully, as our teacher continued his lecture. Taking my own seat, I focused on Iatakan. As much as I could, at least, my muddled thoughts kept me distracted the whole period. Just before the bell rings, Iatakan stares at me dead in the eye. He points a stern finger directly at me and then to the floor to signal, You stay. Once everyone else has left, he closes the class door and locks it. So, care to explain? Explain, sir? He opens the door in the back and signals Olivia to come on out. The mud, the drenched clothes, the declaration of sanctuary. I was having a bad day. She's looking a bit better, still drained, but she's not shivering. Her rat sits on her lap. Yadikan extends a finger down to scratch under its chin. I can see that. He takes a seat against the nearby desk and waves a hand for Olivia to go on. When she doesn't, he shifts his hand to me. I look between the two of them. Mr. Iatakan's expectant leer, and Olivia's pleading eyes. Ultimately, I shake my head in the negative. I just helped Olivia get out of the rain. Of course. He slouches further atop the desk. Can I tell you some other time? Sure. Whatever it was, it looks like you've recovered pretty well. Olivia doesn't answer verbally, instead giving him a bashful smile and a nod. Was it about your work again? Yeah... Oh, this girl. He turns to me and points a thumb at her. You know the work she's so concerned about absolutely wrecks the grading curve in my class. For the sake of the other students, I had to put a limit on extra credit assignments. Really? Yeah, never before would I even consider such a restraint. Why punish someone for working too hard, I would think to myself. Then four years ago, this little green goblin came rolling into my class. Half a semester and more than a few angry calls from parents later, my hands were tied. The young lady simply does too dang much. Olivia smiles, but doesn't look up from her pet. It was that much better than all the other students? Well, no, I don't grade by technique. If I did, you'd be in big trouble, Inko. Olivia's work was very good even then, but the main thing that I admire is how motivated she can be. I haven't seen someone so enthused to just paint in years. Certainly haven't seen anyone so enthused I had to change the rules like that. You were worried it'd stop me? Was I? That definitely sounds like me, but it didn't stop you. Not even a little. Heck, that year you even got me to see some things differently. I don't think I ever did anything like that. You did, when you came in after class the Friday before Mother's Day. Take a look at this. I'm handed the quill pen, and the first thing I note about it is how soft the feather portion is. It's the special pen you always use. It's actually from my wife. Whoa. Inspecting it closer, I can now see more of the intricate details, from the faded engravings on the shank to the maintained but worn point. It's well made and kept, and yet the feather and brass showed its age. She came in that afternoon with a whole stack of crumpled painting drafts, so frustrated she couldn't get it right, and so determined to make it perfect. I say any of these would be great, your aunt would love any of these, and she fires back. If it's not good enough for me, then why would it be good enough for someone I love? I did not have an answer. So I tell her to take a step back. We take a few hours to go over fundamentals once more. I send her home to try getting it right over the weekend, and come Monday she returns and hugs me first thing. That Friday night, though, what she said was on my mind. I talked about it all night with my wife. Then that morning, I decided to make a change for myself. My wife was molting at the time, so there was always a new feather or three in our blankets each morning. I took the biggest one, preserved it right, got a bit of help to make it into a real pen, and I've used it ever since. It helps me remember to do my job right, for the people I care about, and for the people my students care about. I think what it was, it's like that childlike reasoning that comes so naturally for the youth. That reasoning, it makes a type of innocent, earnest dedication, something I think I'd lost for a while. Don't give me so much credit. You haven't lost it, have you? Good, don't lose it for me, okay? Okay. Yadikan yawns and stretches. You feeling alright to go to your next class? Yes, I'm ready. 
Great. He claps a hand over my back. We should do this again sometime. Mr. Iadikan ushers us out of his classroom as the late bell trills, handing us a note he'd rapidly scrawled on. Miss Prockling didn't seem enthused to see us come in late, but sighed as she read the late note from Iadikan. As I took my usual spot, I felt something odd in the corner of my eye. Looking up, it was to see Olivia looking my way, with that smile on her face. One that spoke so many words, yet I couldn't figure out what. All I could do in turn was try to match it before focusing on Miss Prockling's latest lecture. As more time passes, the art contest fades into the background. Last week I had a scare when Principal Scaler called me to her office. I feared that they figured out what Olivia did and assumed I was part of it just as she predicted. Luckily that wasn't the case. Instead she wanted to inform me that they had no leads as to who could have done the swap and since it was tampered it'd be removed from the contest. No skin off my back honestly. As compensation she gave me one of the runner-up prizes, a coupon for some pizza from some Italian restaurant called Dynamo's. Nice! Not the biggest pizza fan, but not a bad prize to get after all of this. Saving it for a rainy day. However, I found myself in a conundrum of my own doing. My peers' concerns about my entry were resolved. But I hadn't accounted for the new questions about my portfolio. My paint portfolio. The few times I showed off my photography work, they'd be mildly impressed at best. They were never upfront about it either. No, instead I got the runaround. Oh, uh, yeah, these are nice, Inko. Not bad, not bad, but, uh, what about what you did for the contest? I can't even be mad about it since it's just another misunderstanding, unintended lie, from my side of things. But then I had a thought. What if it wasn't a lie? What if I was actually good at painting? And after working at it for the past month... Yeah, no, I can't unscrew this. For the past three weeks, I've been staying after school making use of one of the club rooms to practice. Yeesh, Inko, did you listen to any of the tips I gave you? Using everything I had at my disposal, namely the textbooks from Mr. Iadikan and how-to tutorials online, I'd stay as late as possible trying to get to the same skill level as Olivia. And as I stare at the horrid acrylic monstrosity before me, I could do nothing but weep at my own inadequacies. Not actually weep, but squinting at the Lovecraftian horror before me, I can maybe see a little progress drowning in the madness of excess paint. Olivia had made good on her promise to teach me around the time I asked Mr. Iadikan to borrow the keys to the spare room. And while I memorized all of her new teachings down to the letter... What am I even looking at? Are you trying an abstract sort of thing here? It was an attempt at a self-portrait, actually. Could probably post it online and some rich asshole would buy it. Is that good? No, never trust the opinions of people on the internet. <laughs> I've learned that the hard way. After a brief period of awkward silence, I let myself collapse on the stool behind me and toss off the oily apron in frustration. At this rate, I'm gonna be a double fraud or something. <laughs> Splat. I don't even have the energy to get angry. Probably looks better now, at least. How did Olivia get so good at this? Olivia, please, you gotta have some actual advice for me. She quietly hums to herself, slipping away a notebook that she had splayed across her lap into her nearby bag. Well, when I want to draw, it's usually because I've got something on my mind. What, like inspiration? Kinda, more so that I just envision something and I want to put that on canvas. Amuse then, I don't think I really get it, but- The door of the studio flies open and Damien quickly storms inside. Inko, Olivia, are you guys here? He takes heavy breaths as his vision darts around the room. After a moment of surprise, I raise my arm to catch his attention. Damien, what's wrong? The hyperactive Dilophosaurus spots me, taking a final breath before jogging over. Guys, I need to ask you something. What, is everything alright? Is something happening? I can't help but panic, I've never seen Damien this flustered. Do you want to come to the arcade with me and Liz? Is... is that it? Yeah, that's what I said. Wait, when was this decided? I thought something bad had happened. Nope, just asking. Liz already has the car prepped and everything. Oh, I probably should have expected that, but still. How did you know we were here? I didn't. I just kept opening doors until I found you two. I've been at it for a while, actually. Damien's eyes dart to the canvas that lies on the floor next to me. You working on your next masterpiece? 
Ooh, painting sideways is probably one of your trade secrets, huh? Olivia hides her snicker with her hand. Don't worry, I won't tell a soul. Yeah, that's right. Don't tell anybody. I lean down to pick up the canvas and place it upright, deciding to remove the ugly painting and place it in the corner of the room to dry. Anyway, how about it? To the arcade? The Olive Baryonyx fidgets, her brow lowered in contemplation as she considers the question. The arcade, uh... It's not like I had any other plans today. Sure, why not? Alright, let's go! Wait, don't just... Ah <laughs> oh, man, that's super good. Inko, Olivia, there you are. Damien was taking so long to get you, so I was about to come and find you myself. This time both Damien and I are wheezing for air. Despite Olivia's protests and hesitation, Damien had wasted no time in grabbing her by the handlebars and sprinting for the exit. I had chased after them, all the while Olivia screamed like a banshee as she was pushed through the hallway at a breakneck pace. Yeah, just... I take a deep breath and stand upright. Olivia's claws have dug into her armrest, and she's definitely trying to kill Damien with her glare, which he happily ignores. Why didn't you just message me or something? I wanted to, but... Didn't want to ruin your concentration, man. So instead, you kicked the art room door open. Yup. Liz had the good grace to look embarrassed on Damien's behalf. But yeah, gave you a little bit of extra time, right? You've been staying late forever now. I can't hide the wince. It hadn't occurred to me that more people would notice. Ah, oh, relax. It's not like you're the only one. Yeah, I sometimes need to stay behind for student council and club meetings. Right, sure. So, uh... Come on, the car's in the student section. The dino duo start towards the student parking lot, heading towards a rather old but well-kept sedan. Olivia grumbles silently to herself, but follows after nonetheless. Come on, dude, it'll take a few minutes to get Olivia in, and then 30 minutes to get to the arcade. It won't take that long, damn it! Olivia huffs and wheels herself to the passenger side, opening the door for herself. Do you need any? It's fine. Punctuate her statement, Olivia uses her strong arms to lift herself onto her armrests. Then with more grace than I had thought possible from the olive-scaled girl, she manages to flop down into the passenger seat. I stare at the abandoned chair, wondering where to put it. We've got room in the trunk, Inko. Clunk. The trunk lid pops up with a heavy thunk to punctuate that. It takes me more time than I'd like to admit to figure out how to undo the locks to actually collapse the chair, but once it's done, I'm able to slide it into the spacious storage area easily. Damien had already hopped through the window of the front passenger seat by the time I'm done, as if he'd practiced the maneuver. Clack, clack, clack. I simply open the door behind Liz's seat and watch as a pile of soda cans empty onto the pavement below. Ah, sorry, those are from this morning. I just toss them into the back seat when I'm done. Surprised Liz doesn't make you use a bag. I do. Damien pulls up an overflowing plastic bag as if it were a trophy. Uh, why haven't you tossed all those bottles out already? I'm saving them for a project about recycling, plus I'm also going to use a couple of them for a sculpture. Saves me the trouble of going out and finding aluminum. And I get to drink as much soda as I want! I don't really say anything as Damien scoops out the rest of the cans from the floor of the car and puts them in a new bag which he then stuffs in the car's trunk before giving me and Olivia a thumbs up. Alright dudes, we're good to go. I nod and sink into the semi-clean seat. My hand searches for the buckle of the seatbelt and brushes against something warm and soft. There's a tiny gasp next to me, and the comfortable mystery in my hands is yanked away. Huh? I look to Olivia. Her hand held to her chest, her green face has a scarlet tinge, and her mirror-shade eyes glare holes through my head. You okay? The emerald-scaled girl turns her maw from me. I stifle a mystery chuckle at that. The warmth of my palm fades, however, and leaves my hand feeling lost. <laughs> okay, all the safety checks are done. Liz gets in the driver's seat and grips the steering wheel. <laughs> she has to do that to fit in the cabin. Outside, she's craning her neck to check on the mirrors and tires. Wait, Liz drives with her head sticking out the window? Liz pokes her head in. What's that? Her neck snakes inside and coils around the hook in the middle of the car. 
Then, with practice motion, her neck continuously coils till her head sits atop the neck roll, as if no different from someone putting on shoes. It kind of looks like a giant scale-covered scarf. There's even still enough space for her to see the windows and check behind her. Inko? Hmm? Uh, it wasn't anything important. Alright. But, uh, the city, right? I'd actually be wanting to see it a bit more up close for Yadikan's class. Do you know how much gas money it burned through to take a detour around here? No? Good, because neither do I. Let's do it. Hey, what? No. I barely have enough as is. The view on the way is fine. I'm looking forward to it as well. You sure? Yeah, I'll point out some stuff I remember along the way. Hmm, you're my tour guide now? Don't make me change my mind. Glad that's settled. Everyone buckled in, right? Liz pulls away from the school parking lot, starting down the opposite direction I've always entered and exited. Weird to think, but the edge of my world was as close as a right turn out of my own school. Then again, I still haven't been living here long. Anybody want a station? I don't think I've ever listened to the radio here, either. Liz and Olivia hardly seem to glance in Damien's direction as well. Suit yourselves! Within the span of a few seconds, the natural ambience of the road is replaced with the loud sound of decades-old rock music, sending vibrations throughout the car and everybody in it. Just as fast as it comes, however, it stops as Liz haphazardly yanks the volume knob counterclockwise, toning the music down to a bearable level. Damien frowns for a moment, but he doesn't seem to contest her decision. Zzz. What the? I turned off all the notifications to fix up for messages and calls, and between all the people I messaged, there's only one who isn't inside the car. Checking the screen, I see... D-Man, any song request, man? Seriously? I don't know, Damien, so long as it isn't twangy country music. Sure, sure. Wait, you've been texting? How long? What the heck, dude? Let me see your phone. I hand it over, open on the contact creation page. She taps the first few numbers and pauses, then sheepishly yanks her phone from her coat pocket. She doesn't know her own number. Olivia finishes tapping her number in and hands it back. She's entered herself as Live Long. Huh, sounds vaguely oriental. So sounds vaguely ethnic. <laughs> Test. Yep, got it. <laughs> that was uncalled for. That's why I sent it. She giggles at her own joke, and despite being the butt of it, the mood in the car is too high to hold it against her. Before long, the dense forestry starts giving way to more urban developments. More and more decorative palm trees start dotting the paths as well. The silhouette of the city gets closer, and we approach one of those spaghetti junctions leading up to it. The result of decades of poor infrastructure and decisions, multi-million dollar projects promising to fix all the traffic if they just built one more overpass. Olivia's paying close attention to her phone. She scrolls lazily through some forum. <laughs> What's so funny? Uh, oh, uh, nothing. Hey. Lizard Lounge. Oh boy, you're still browsing that, Olivia? Yeah? What is it? Don't tell him. It's this weird exclusionary chat room. They only allow dinosaur women, men, and rather specifically human men are banned. <laughs> Racial segregation? Olivia showed me once, the people in it are really weird. Humans are banned? You weren't supposed to tell him. I think there's probably better places for that online for you to associate with. Tell me about the racial segregation. It's not that. It's just how it has to be for our safety. Some dino girl can be doing anything at all, and there's always at least three guys in the comments saying she looks like... Don't say it. They also really brings down the quality of the site. Look, it's explained in the rules that humans have one-fifth the intention span of dinos. Liz groans while Olivia shows me her phone. The graph is blurred to hell and I can't make out most of the text. I don't know how I feel about all this. What's not to get, Inko? Think about it. You're in history class. It sucks, so you just remember, wait a second, I'm human, and stop listening. I wish I could do that. According to Lady Hitler here, you can. It's just a funny group of women like me. Lay off, let me have it. You don't really believe that stuff, though, do you? Not really, it's just the rules of the place, alright? Okay... 
Olivia sticks the phone back into her pocket with a huff. Was the ride to the arcade always this long? I think we're about 20 minutes away from the arcade still. Don't worry, Yinko. The water fountains are integrated. <laughs> Shut up! Damien cackles to himself. All right, I hope the place still sells those hot dogs for just a dollar. There's no way anyone anywhere sells hot dogs for a dollar anymore. Yeah, but they did. It was great. Olivia and I would save our lunch money to just go here instead after class. I don't think I'd trust it if it were still that cheap, honestly. You ate a dog off the floor once. That's different. Damien fills the air with old tales of his and Olivia's adventures in the arcade. She'd occasionally chime in to correct him on whatever over-embellishment. Even as the last remnants of suburbia melt away and skyscrapers overtake our view of the outside world, finally I'm in the big city. Here we are! I'm almost disappointed when we pull into the arcade parking lot. Large glass windows covered in sun-bleached promotional leaflets adorn the front of the arcade and the building itself looks a couple of decades old. This place was probably successful in the past, but I can only imagine they break even... But I can only imagine they break even nowadays. Though maybe the recent resurgence of Retro Deco could change that. I can show you more on the return trip, come on. I guess she must have seen my brief hesitance. Liz unlocks the trunk and I hop out to get Olivia's chair. As I attempt to heave the thing out of Liz's trunk, it takes considerably more effort than I would like to admit. Now how do I unfold this blasted thing? I think there's a release button, right? As I check to make sure that all my fingers are intact, I can see Olivia snickering through the passenger window. Inko-san, you have much to learn. Observe. Olivia makes sure the brakes are held and heaves herself over in one motion. The chair is forced open by momentum alone with a loud crack. She gracefully rolls by me, tongue stuck out in smug victory over my ineptitude. Ready? Sweet! Damien hurries us inside, and I can tell he's the most excited to be here out of anybody. Dude, this place is the bomb! <laughs> ah, hell yeah. Now they're making the Yeek references for me. We used to scrounge for change to come here after school. The place is abuzz with activity, flashing machines all competing for attention and gamers excitingly conversing. I lean in a bit closer to Olivia. It's pretty dang loud here. You gonna be alright having to speak up more? Huh? Of course I am. What do you take me for, kid? Sorry. I appreciate the I appreciate the concern. Liz scowls as she peels her boot from the floor with a loud shh. And ugh. Damien, you could have warned Damien's taken off towards a nearby coin machine, fistfuls of bills at the ready. I could have told you too. I've been here before. So why didn't you warn me about the stickiness? Olivia shrugs. Liz's head lowers to bridge of snoot pinching levels. Well, you two did kind of drop this on me at the last minute. But I still remember this place pretty well. Great, you can show Inko around and I'll go with Damien. Liz meekly puts her pointer fingers together as she looks at the salmon frilled teen. Those two player thingies look fun to try out. You mean the light gun games? Yeah, those ones. I can't put my finger on it, but something tells me that Liz was banking on splitting apart from the start. Though it would give me an ample opportunity to have some alone time with Olivia. Just to get to know her more, of course. Liz, I think I broke this one's joystick. Liz sighs heavily through her nose. Seriously, Damien? Oh, come on, it's perfectly even and fair. You sure about this, Liz? We could all just stick together. The long neck dino looks around the arcade nervously. As much as I want to protest the suggestion, it might be for the best. Liz wants to stick with Damien, probably to make sure he doesn't do any more damage. And Olivia knows this place as well, so she'd know all the best games. We've already been spending time together after school, so why not? I'm not against the idea, just, uh... Alright, glad you agree. Liz takes this as her cue to leave, and she quickly pulls Damien away deep into the arcade. Meanwhile, Olivia begins to roll ahead, but stops and gives me an annoyed look. Uh... Come on already. Ah, right. As soon as I step over, Olivia resumes her casual roll down the aisleway. 